Utori Zoku. I'm Imari, the creator behind the Always Utori blog. Today I'll show you how to make four seashell home decor projects as part of the mermaid core and siren trend we're covering. Be sure to check out our mermaid-inspired chia seed pudding recipe here on YouTube, as well as our article about the mermaid core and siren fashion trend on our blog. Both will be linked in the description box below. With that, let's get into our first DIY, a seashell trinket dish. I found inspiration for these shell trinket dishes on Pinterest and YouTube. They are really easy to make yourself and super customizable. I started by making sure the shells I was using were washed well. I got my shells from a thrift store and they were under $4. I also saw that Dollar Tree had a nice assortment of shells as well, which might work for this project. Shells are also widely available on Amazon. After the shells were cleaned, I dried them thoroughly. Now I'm painting the shells with white acrylic paint. I added water to the paint so it would be thinner and not so opaque. You can do one to two coats depending on how dark your shells are and your preference for the color. I chose not to paint the larger shell because I thought it was pretty on its own. Now that the outside is done, I'm just doing a quick coat on the inside so that there aren't any dark spots. Now I'm going to cut out these shapes from these napkins that I got from Dollar Tree. You can use napkins, paper, or even fabric for your own project. I'm cutting out the specific shapes I want to use, but depending on the type of shell, the size, and the print you're using, you can decide if you want to cut out the print to fit the size of the shell or cut out individual pieces to go inside the shell. If you're using a napkin, you can remove the second layer so it's just one ply. Now I'm just trimming off the excess napkin. Then I applied a thin layer of Mod Podge to the shell. I placed the napkin on top and then applied another thin layer of Mod Podge on top. Then I let it dry and continued the same process with the remaining shells. Now I'm working on the larger shell. I wanted to preserve the purple part of the shell, so I put a thin layer of Mod Podge so that it would be shiny and protected. Instead of doing one shape like I did with the smaller shells, I wanted to go for a layered collage effect with the larger shell. I used the same method as I did with the smaller shells, applying a thin layer of Mod Podge and then painting it on top of the napkins. I let everything dry and then went in with a gold leaf pen and painted the edges of the shells. This really gives the shells a gilded look. You can get a gold leaf pen from Amazon. I also made sure to paint the top part of the shell so you could really see that gold come through. Then I completed the process with the rest of the shells. I wasn't 100% sure that I loved the collage effect I did on the larger shell, so I was trying to make it a little more interesting by adding some gold highlights here with the gold leaf pin. And then I repeated the same process of painting the edges as well as the hinge part of the shell with the gold leaf pin. Now it's time to add some bling to this larger shell. I'm using these dark faux pearls, which I'm pretty sure I got from Amazon, but I've had them around the house for a while. So if I can find them again, I'll link to them in the description box. And I'm using E6000 glue to attach them to the shell. I originally wanted to do something with clay because one of my inspiration pictures had done something similar, but that didn't end up working out. So I'm going with these little pearls. I wanted it to look more natural, like you found this really cool piece from the ocean. So I'm not really doing a specific pattern. I'm just adding them randomly so that it looks natural. The pearls had a variation of sizes. I used the back of my paintbrush to help me place and arrange them into a way that I liked. So 
so now I'm applying a final coat of Mod Podge on the large shell. I did an additional layer on this one because I had used the gold leaf pen to add some detail, so I wanted to make sure that was protected. And with that, this project is done. It's really quick and simple to do, and I think they turned out really nice. You can use these trinket dishes to store jewelry or other items you have around the house. What's really great about this project is that it's really customizable. Depending on what napkins or paper you use, you can really change the look and make it fit into your aesthetic. I think this project can also make a really nice gift for friends and family. The next project is wall art made up of a collection of shells. I found my inspiration for this shell wall art piece on Pinterest. I thought this would be a fun way to display a shell collection and turn it into a piece of art for your home. So I'm using a picture that I got from Dollar Tree last year. It was a St. Patrick themed one that had a paper print on the front. So I ripped that off and I'm sanding it down so it's smooth. You could use an actual canvas if you have one or whatever else you might have lying around. So now I'm using acrylic paint that I got from Dollar Tree to cover up the canvas just so that when I attach the shells, you can't really see a lighter color shining through. I did two coats of this brown paint to cover up the lighter brown and the green on the outside of this canvas. And here's the second coat. So now I'm just doing a test layout to get a feel for how I might want to lay out the shells on the canvas. The original inspiration pictures were turned with the shells inside out, but I was really inspired by some shells I found that had a sort of dirt inlay, so I thought I would stick with them facing frontwards. So now I'm using E6000 glue to glue the shells to the canvas. Since every shell shape is different, you might need different amounts of glue to make sure that the shells are securely attached to the canvas. So now I'm just attaching all the shells in whatever pattern I want and this is where you can get creative with your own project and decide what colors and shapes fit best and you basically need to fill in holes and kind of stack the shells on top of each other so that you can't see the canvas beneath as much. Once you get all of the shells attached in the way that you like, you just let the project dry for a couple of hours. So once mine was dry, I wasn't quite happy with it. I thought it looked a little too clean because I was really inspired by those shells that you can see in the corner that had dirt pressed into them. Uh, they were basically like that when I got them. So I am using some water to press coffee grinds into the nooks and crannies of the other shelves to give it a more weathered and kind of dirt look. It wasn't necessarily my intention for the coffee grinds to remain on the picture. So I didn't glue them down or anything. I'm just using the coffee grinds to stain the shelves. And then once the coffee grinds dried, I tapped off any excess. I was really happy with how the coffee grind stained and weathered the shells, but I still felt like it was missing something. I decided to add some pearl beads into the nooks and crannies just to add a little bit of interest and also cover up any place where you might be able to see the canvas. And again, I'm using E6000 glue to attach the pearls. And here is the completed wall art. Because my canvas was from Dollar Tree, there was already a hook attached to the back. But if you did yours on a canvas, then you can attach a hook yourself, or you could prop it up in a bookshelf or against a wall. The next project is a large shell statement piece. I found inspiration for this project on both Pinterest and on Wayfair. As you can see, the Wayfair item costs $202. 
or you can get it from Etsy for $27. My local thrift store has a section where they bag a bunch of similar items together, and that's where I found this large shell. If you watched my most recent Thrift With Me video, then you saw that I found a lot of seashells at my local thrift store. So that's a great place to look for shells if you want to follow along for these projects. I thoroughly washed the shell and I made sure that I removed all of the sticker residue from the price tag. Then I dried the shell and now I'm spray painting it with black spray paint. I did about two coats on the top and bottom of the shell and I let it dry in between coats. Now I'm covering the shell in a glossy coat so that it's shiny. I really wanted this project to look like something you could find at a high-end store. So I'm going to set the shell on a wooden plaque. I picked up the 7 and 16 inch dowel rod from Walmart. The diameter of the dowel rod doesn't really matter, except that we're going to be drilling a hole and the drill bit needs to be able to create a hole that the dowel rod can fit in. My drill bit was a little smaller than the diameter of my dowel rod. So when I drilled a hole, I had to wiggle it around a bit so that the dowel rod would eventually fit. Now I'm getting a feel for how I want the shell to stand on the plaque, which I got from Dollar Tree. I want the shell to stand at an angle, and I'm also getting a feel for how long I want the dowel rod to be. If you get your dowel rod from a home improvement store, you can ask them to cut the dowel rod for you there. Or if you have a hand saw at home, or if you have woodworking tools at home, you can use that. Here I'm marking how long I want the dowel rod to be. So now that the dowel rod is cut, I'm double checking the angle that I want the shell to sit at. I borrowed this handy tool from my dad who does some woodworking so I could determine what angle I needed. But if you don't have a tool like this at home, then I recommend using something like a book or a cereal box, something that will hold the dowel rod up at the angle that you want. That will be a useful tool for when we drill a hole later. I was going for a 45 degree angle, so my dad made me these cheats that are cut at a 45 degree angle. But again, if you don't have something like this at home, then you could use anything you have around the house to help you get the angle you want. So now I'm doing a test drill before I do it on the plaque. This is where a book or a piece of wood or a cereal box will come in handy as it will help you to hold the drill at the angle you want to drill at. To get started, drill straight down for a little bit and then move the drill to the angle that you want. If you don't do this, it can be a little bit hard for the drill to get traction, as you'll see when I try to do this on the plaque. The drill rolled across the wood and then left some marks that I had to fill in later. So now I'm preparing to do it on the real thing. I'm trying to determine how far I want the dowel rod to be in on the plaque and I'm trying to make sure that the shell doesn't hang off the side of the plaque so that it's contained within the area. So once I determined about where I wanted the dowel rod to be, I did a measurement just to be sure and then marked that spot on the plaque so that I would know where to drill. Make sure to double check that wherever you mark is going to be in the center of the plaque. I thought that I marked the center, but when I drilled, it was actually a little off center, so I had to correct it. It wasn't anything too bad, but just be careful so that your shell isn't hanging too far to the left or right. So here's where you can see that I didn't drill down straight far enough. So the drill rolled off the side of the plaque and left some marks, and then I'm realizing that doesn't quite look center, so now I'm readjusting and double checking my measurement. It ended up not being too big of a deal because my drill bit was a little bit smaller than my dowel rod, so I needed to add some circumference anyway, so I was able to incorporate that sort of mist drill into the overall size of the hole I was trying to make. Another important thing that I didn't consider is how close the hole I was drilling is to the edge. Because this plaque is from Dollar Tree, the wood is quite soft and it started to split as I was drilling. That was something I had to end up fixing, but just be aware of that if you are going to use this with a Dollar Tree plaque. If you use a harder wood, you might not have to worry about this as much, but it's just something to consider if you're going to do this project. So now I'm wiggling the drill bit around just to get the hole a little bit wider so the dowel rod will fit. Also be careful not to drill a hole all the way through the wood. If you do that, that's not too big of a problem. We're going to glue the dowel rod in place anyway, but the goal is just to have the dowel rod to sit inside the wood. So now I'm just double checking the angle and picking up any larger pieces that came off the wood when I was drilling so that I can glue them back in. 
so this isn't 100% necessary, but I ended up using a box cutting knife to whittle down one end of the dowel rod just to make sure that it fits more snugly into the hole that I drilled. So now I'm using E6000 glue to secure the dowel rod into the hole that I drilled. And there it goes, the glue exploded all over me. I didn't notice that the top was starting to come undone, so when I squeezed it came out the other end. I'm just using an attachment that came with the glue to transfer it from the top into the hole that I drilled. If you have wood glue on hand, you could also use that as well. And now I'm just gluing back in the parts that fell out when I drilled. So hopefully if you do this project, you won't have to do this next step. But because I made a few mistakes along the way, I'm just gonna fill in some of those holes with some wood repair resin. You could also use wood putty if you have that. This resin works by rolling it between your fingers and make sure that if you do end up using this, you wear gloves because it's an irritant. Once you've softened the resin, you can press it into the holes. So you can see I'm just filling in the gaps kind of by the dowel rod and also trying to fix those drill marks that I accidentally made. So once I filled in the holes, I had to let it cure for about 15 to 20 minutes and now I'm just sanding it so that it's smooth. And while I was at it, I went ahead and sanded the rest of the plaque just to make sure there weren't any rough edges so that it will take the stain really well. Also, you can kind of see that I'm pulling up on the dowel rod and it doesn't look 100% set down. Because I had this outside, I don't think it fully cured until I brought it inside later. So after I finished sanding, I just quickly rubbed down the plaque with a rag just to make sure there weren't any shavings or anything to get in the way of the staining. I'm using a dark walnut stain, but you can use any kind of stain color you want. Make sure that you stir the stain up really well so that there isn't any remaining pigments or sediments at the bottom. You can use a rag or a sponge to put the stain onto the wood. If you want a lighter color, you can use the sponge to also remove the stain, but I wanted mine to be a dark color, so I made sure it was well saturated. At the end there, I'm just using the paint stick to prop up the plaque so that it doesn't get stuck to the paper while it dries. Once you're done staining, let it dry for 24 hours and then you're done. And here's the final stand. And the shell. If you want, you can attach the shell with glue, but I decided to just let mine hang onto the wood dowel. That allows me to move the shell around if I want or to reuse the stand for something else in the future. I think this project makes a great statement piece. And you can really make this project your own by experimenting with different shell types or even different colors. Now we're on to the next project and I think this one ended up being my favorite. I was inspired by these napkin rings I saw in Anthropology for $38, and I found a few other examples on Pinterest. Because I thrifted my shells, I had a large assortment to pick from. I'm starting by selecting potential shells, and then I washed and dried all of them before making my final decision. I ended up finding four conch shells that were of a similar size and shape. The goal was to find shells that looked uniform so it looked like they belonged in a set. I wanted to paint the shells a white pearlescent color, but I didn't have any on hand. So I tried to create my own using white acrylic paint and pearl mica powder. I didn't quite work out the way I wanted. I don't think I added enough mica powder to really get that pearlescent effect I was going for. You could experiment with this yourself or just get some pearlescent paint. I do recommend that if you're going to use mica powders, however, that you wear a mask because they're very fine particles and that can get into your lungs. Alternatively, you could try adding glitter to the paint. Now I'm adding a little bit of water to the paint because I wanted the paint to be sheer. 
I was hoping to protect some of the natural beauty of the shells and let some of that pattern shine through, so I'm going for a light whitewash effect. And now I'm just painting all the shells. And here I'm just adding a little bit more mica just to see if that adds to the pearl effect I was going for. I didn't see much of a difference. And now I'm doing a second coat. I decided to sprinkle some mica on top of the paint while it was drying just to get that added shiny effect. And I do like the subtle hint of sparkle that it added. And now I'm just doing a quick paint touch up. These conch shells have ridges at the top, so I thought it'd be really pretty to add some faux pearls in between each ridge. I had some faux pearls that have adhesive on the back, but I wanted to make sure that they stuck to the shell, so I'm applying Mod Podge between each ridge where I'm going to stick the pearl. I used my paintbrush to apply Mod Podge in between each ridge, and then I used a combination of my fingers and the back of the paintbrush to help me adjust and move the pearls into position. The space between the ridges on the shell gets smaller as it moves up the shell. Because my pearls came with different sizes, I decided to use larger pearls at the bottom and then gradually use smaller pearls as I moved up the shell. Even though it looks opaque right now, the Mod Podge will dry clear. You can decide if you want to use matte or gloss Mod Podge. I went for matte. Another thing to be aware of is that while the Mod Podge is drying, the pearls have the potential to slide down or move around as you're working on it, so keep an eye out for that. Once I went around the shell with the pearls, just before the pearls would overlap on the front side, I transitioned from the faux pearls to some rhinestones. And just like with the pearls, I moved from larger to smaller rhinestones as I moved up the shell. Essentially, when the design is finished, you should have one row of pearls and one row of rhinestones. And now I'm going to complete the same process on the rest of the shells. So now I'm doing a final coat of Mod Podge, and this time I'm using a glossy finish. This will work to protect the paint and further secure the rhinestones and pearls that I put on. So now I'm just going to let these dry before I attach them to napkin rings. So now I'm using E6000 glue to attach the shells to these napkin rings. I'm using napkin rings that I had that actually broke, and instead of re-gluing on the original attachment, I decided to put these shells on top but you can get napkin rings from Dollar Tree or Amazon. And just to make sure they don't move around while they're drying, I lean them against this Mod Podge tub. And here are the finished napkin rings. I really love how these turned out. I'll be honest, beachy seashell decor isn't really my thing, but I think that these napkin rings transcend the beach aesthetic and become elegant. It would work well on any table setting this summer or even beyond. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments below which project was your favorite or which project you plan to make yourself. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.